I was at the Council Assembly as a Tashi from Kano State when there were preparations to set the, the Houses of Assembly on the introduction of democracy in Nigeria. From then I transferred my services to federal government. I was first as deputy director for a short while and then director in the presidency for director of finance, director of movement to Abuja. I was then director in the federal ministry of women and race, finance. And then I became a permanent secretary first in the office of the head of service, the Ministry of Power and Steel. Then I moved to transport. I moved to education. I then moved to works and works. And then after works, okay. when I was Minister of Work, there was this merger. And uh, three big ministries were merged together to make a mega ministry. Wow. That was works, aviation, and transport. And that became Ministry of Transportation. And then I was made the permanent secretary. Wow. And then after the demerger again, I was posted to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. I was posted back to the Ministry of Transport again. And then from the Ministry of Transport, I was in the head of service office under the pensions uh, and records office before this uh, tenure policy that if you stay in the permanent secretary or director position for eight years, then by the court policy, we should retire, and I retired. But while I was holding all these offices, all the time I was having one way or the other an ad hoc responsibility. I think if I can remember very well, even in Kano State we had these social policy committees. When the then governor, military governor, Dazu Maru, felt that there were so many social problems happening. So he said social policy committees on Ambajiris, on women, on other four other four other committees. And I was a sub on the women committee. And then in all the in the federal service, I was first uh, appointed as a secretary of the uh, National Reconciliation Committee, a king, a king the committee that we the whole country with so many past governors and top Nigerians. For about two years we were touring the country trying to see how we could put in some reconciliations because of the diverse issues in Nigeria and the other challenges. Uh, we focus mostly on the Pokoni land and the Nadiko area. We're always in uh, Ogoni land, or around Ondo and, uh, you know, here yeah, Lagos area, particularly Ondo, where and the uh, Ajacin's uh, territory, or we're always there. And it was very interesting. Then I was also the secretary of the investigation into the multinational petroleum company, NMPC, the petroleum sector, and uh, General Abisoy. And I think we toured the whole world. We are trying to compare our operations with other world uh, operations of uh, oil, petrol, and all the contents of the world taken care of. And we did our studies, and we were also always in the uh, oil producing areas of the country. Uh, then I was also the secretary of Oputa, Oputa Commission. Yeah, that one I was together with the uh, Kuka and the rest. Uh, then I was also the sole administrator when Abacha died and uh, uh, Salam Jam Salam took over. The all the parties were dissolved. I was made sole administrator of the DPM, national sole administrator, to wound it up. And then uh, later I became the Deputy Secretary, I was the only government man in the National Conference that was organized by Chief Shibun uh, uh, The chairman was uh, uh, Mrs. Miki Tobi. I was uh, there also with the, uh, for the Kuka and uh, the, you know, there are two joint secretaries, uh, for the, Professor Olaide and the, for the Kuka. And I was also there with another colleague of mine joined the meetings. I was uh, on the board 
because of so many of the uh, boards of parastatals by virtue of my being there as permanent secretary, because of the boards, no one else transport, MPA, NASA or NME then, and Shippers Council, and transport, Niger Radio Corporation, and you have the, I was the chairman, actually interim chairman of the NITT in Zaria. You know, uh, Maritime College at Oran, just member of all the boards. In power, I was there as uh, board of uh, NEPA, of course. And in, 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 in culture and tourism also, the Board of Tourism Board. Several, in education, NUC, you know, NIT, NIT, Board of Technical Education, the, you know, all the boards technically, one way or the other. How then did you transfer from public service to private service? It's very unusual of Nigeria today to see someone from public going to private and performing excellently well the way you have done. Well, uh, when I retired, okay. I can comfortably tell you that it's goodwill because I've just approached to come and be the chairman when the time of Professor Mwagunji had ended okay. by statutory, not because he didn't want him also, because it was just a time kind of time bad. So it was time. And then I was approached by uh, the then managing director for the okay. But he, they made the, he made his own consultation all around. And uh, it is also surprised that wherever he consulted, they were comfortable. Mm -hmm. He then approached me. It was even the fear whether I would take it or not, knowing my time. Yes. But I can comfortably tell you, just good way, that has brought me to the way I am as chairman of Unity Bank. Not that uh, there's a lot of the, that financial, <laughs> just like Professor Ajimaru Binji. So, I crossed there. Now, in fact, I'm surprised that I've just found myself in the private sector. Yeah. But I've dealt with so much private sector in the in my activities in the public sector because there are no partners to the public sector as the private sector. That's true. And also, in serving on several boards, you're also dealing with private sector. I can also tell you that when the PPP started. I think we rolled out one of the first few, if not the first, PPP Ministry of Works. So I think uh, the private sector, I, I crossed to the private sector, not that I have ever been in the private sector per se, but I have always been with the private sector. So now in private sector, I find myself fitting, not fit, fitting into the private sector. And I am finding it very, very, you know, educating and interesting. Uh, I think it's interesting. If you have served at different places, occupied so many positions, which one would it give you the most satisfaction if you look back into history and see you have served at different places? Well, I will tell you that everywhere I've been, I'm very, very satisfied and happy because I can comfortably say that I've tried my best and left a legacy. I, I, always, I was always devoted, dedicated, and ensuring that I would prove those who think civil service is not a place to go. There is a lot of bureaucracy and delay. I always try to prove that. And I think most of the people that I've worked with can testify to that. But I can say one of the, if I'm forced to say I have to choose, just like having children, and you are forced to say, oh, having more than one wife, and you are asked to say which one you prefer the best. But out of the first, uh, one among the equals, I can comfortably say that education. Okay. Education is a really great challenge because when you talk of education, you can simply understand what I mean. If you are talking of any important role any government is to play to today, anywhere is education. Until you have education, there is no way you can have anything that is going to work. There is no proper education, there won't be proper power. Okay. There is no proper education, there won't be proper transportation. Okay. There won't be proper culture and tourism. There won't be proper public service. So I think 
the challenges in education were really down to, but very interesting. And I had a wonderful cooperation from all those people that we have worked together with. So if you ask me to sing out, I can say that. And also transportation or transport. Because transport, in, as a ministry, is a very small place. But it is so big and large when you talk of maritime transport, when you talk of rail transport, and you talk of road transportation. And uh, again, without transportation also, there wouldn't be all the linkages that will lead to proper development, internationally, nationally, and locally. So I think if, if I have to, I can say those are the first of all the ones that I can comfortably say, because you have asked the question. You have traveled the length and breadth of Nigeria, had a lot of experience. One will be tempted to ask, why are you not in politics today? Because you have what it takes to lead us as a nation. Why are you holding back on that? Well, <laughs> this is a very difficult question because you are challenging me. One, I know there are so many circumstances and times when I have been asked to come and join politics. I, there is nobody who will say you will not play politics. But you can comfortably play politics in different uh, you know, ways and uh, modes. I choose to play politics from the side. Okay. Try to see how best I can put advice to anybody. Uh, all those that are put in power, many of them, we liars, we understand ourselves. And I think I try hard to see one-on-one -on -one okay. the best I could. Maybe in the future. Then, uh, in terms of office, you say public office, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I answer the question, it's like you are asking for to be appointed, but you say I have not been, you know, unless you are appointed, you cannot go and take yourself to any place. But at the same time, one is very, very comfortable. Like now, I'm chairing this board, and to take too many things at a time especially when you are, say, or retirement, I think it's difficult. But that does not mean one is not contributing in the development of this nation. I've always tried to say to people, people in, gov in governance, they are facing great challenges.